All right. I don't know. Okay. That's going to be fine. He says, Major Manders lives in uh, an ancient home. He does not have a phone. Oh. However, uh, however, I believe that, uh, I believe that I could give you his address and you could call on him at his home. I, I don't believe he would mind at all. And he, uh, he starts to, uh, he starts to scribble something down on a, on a piece of paper. That would be excellent. Uh, when I look at him, how old do I think this guy is? Early forties. Oh, so he served in the great war. Oh yeah. Well, then I'll say to him, thank you, Sergeant. Those of us who uh, served in the Great War, uh, we've, we've got to kind of stick together. He uh, he he kind of nods and harumphs and says, uh, and says, indeed, I, uh, I assume you uh, came across the pond and uh, fought with us. It was indeed uh, a horrible, horrible experience. <laughs> nice answer without answering. <laughs> um, okay, so he yep. writes down the address yep. on a piece of paper? Yep, yep. Awesome. So the, uh, you know, consulting, I'm sure you guys have a basic map of Cairo uh, uh, that would have been included. Um, wow, my speaking of my map, my map just became illegible. There we go. So his, uh, the major's house is very nearly, well, it's east-southeast of here. Uh, you, um, you'd have to cut, you know, it's, it's, it's a good couple miles. Ooh. And there's no direct path based on the streets and city blocks. You're going to be doing a lot of over and down, over and down. Um, well, I'm not up for walking necessarily. Uh, I'm sure we can catch a cab outside the embassy if we trust our lives to these guys. <laughs> well, uh, how about we give uh, Al Hazri a call? <laughs> <laughs> that that that's uh why not excuse me sergeant can i use your phone there <laughs> the sergeant kind of looks at you looks down at the phone <laughs> and says i suppose all right slim uh pulls out whatever napkin <laughs> the, uh, the thing was written on and dials up uh Al Hazred to come pick them up. All right, he he says, "Oh, what luck! What luck! You're at the embassy. I my my home is nearby." Well, appreciate that, partner. I will be there in moments. He hangs up. He says, "Sure is a nice feller." <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> um, anything you guys need from the embassy while we're here? I don't think there are any other leads to be gotten. There's only trouble to be gotten into. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> uh, so uh, uh, you guys uh, turn around, and head out of the embassy. Uh, you know, they, as you come out of the portico entrance, there's a there's a there's a drive through uh, uh, area that is as bricked off, and. Uh, Al Hazred's car comes screaming through the turn, tires squealing, uh, uh, nearly taking off the door of a of a uh, uh, of a Rolls Royce as he comes to a squealing halt. He uh, shouts out the window, "I am here! Come, jump in, my friends!" Slim tips his hat to the the guard as they walk out. That'd be a ride. <laughs> Thank you, Jim, and. Uh, he goes to the car. He gets in the, the front seat. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and uh, he says, uh, how you doing, Abdul? 
<laughs> says, uh, I'm doing well. I'm doing well, Master Slim. Where where are we taking you? Is that really his first name, or you call everyone Abdul? <laughs> <laughs> That's what he said his name Hachi. was. Sorry, Hachi. Go yeah, ahead. Yeah, it's okay. He <laughs> says, uh, where where am I taking you? And uh, he, he, like, looks back at, uh, at Baker, who I assume has oh. the paper. Yeah. Uh, hands it up to you so you can show it to, the, to him. He says, oh, I know this street well. We will be there soon. <laughs> and he, he uh, throws the car in gear and just and, uh, lets out the clutch and just floors it uh, out of the embassy. <laughs> it's a the it's it's a matter of only a few miles but it's it's many uh it's many turns it's a straight shot southeast followed by a right turn and a left turn and then down diagonal street then a right turn that loops around to the left it's uh and it is the most harrowing experience uh <laughs> that you think any of you have ever had <laughs> uh, it, it is it is amazing that uh, he has never killed anybody with this cab of his, or perhaps he has. You don't know. You're sure. <laughs> as far as we know, that's right. <laughs> he uh, he comes to a screeching halt outside. Uh, uh, you know, it's interesting that I don't think they ever actually gave me the name of the street he lives on, and I suppose I could match it up if I really felt the need against one of the real maps, but that requires, I think, a lot of effort. I don't feel like going through. Um, he, uh, a, a, you're clearly in a, uh, you're you're kind of south of the city center, and you're clearly in a in a working class area. Uh, and uh, you know the homes are are in general more uh, basic uh, 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 construction and relatively poor. The st- the streets are all paved, but. Um, Hey, you're just you're just clearly in what looks like a, a shall we say a blue collar a neighborhood, if such a thing exists. The um, he uh, he he pulls the car to a halt and he uh, he points and he says, "I believe that is your address." There's a there's a wall, a white wall with a lattice wood gate, and there it looks like there are gardens and a three story stone. Home, uh, behind that wall. So this must stick out in comparison to the other houses. It absolutely does. Okay. Well, Abdul, I appreciate it. Might give you a call later. He Maybe says, "Do you, you want? I should wait for you." He looks back at the the other two. What do you think, boys? Um. Yes, wait. Yeah, for at least for a few minutes. Let's see. Let's see what uh, transpires. He nods and he says, "Your money is good. I will wait." Yeah, I think uh, Slim like rifles through the envelope again for the foreign currency and pays him <laughs> probably way too much. <laughs> he has no idea what he's doing. All right. We'll be right back. He says, "Very good, my friend." And then he 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 uh, he takes kind of this wide-brimmed uh, uh, white hat and he uh, tips it down over his eyes, <laughs> leans back against the against the headrest of the car. All right. So exiting the car and walking up to the gate. Um, when you say latticed, can we see through the gate? You can. You can. There are. Um, there are gardens beyond the gate um rather green and pretty someone must water the living hell out of them and there is a there is a pole hanging down from a brass bell okay that's what i wanted to discern was what was the protocol here uh so clearly we should ring the bell and not just enter someone's private garden that leads to their home so ring-a-ling-ling now uh well after he rings it he says uh now what exactly are we telling this guy well i think that uh we can tell him some information that 
were investigating a sensitive matter uh, for the British government and that uh, we came across his name in some records and would like to have a discussion with him. Sounds good to I me. We, I think that we, I think that we uh, grudgingly give up information depending on how the conversation goes and whether we think that he's a good guy or not so good guy. He's All an right. engineer. He can't be half bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, it turns out to be more the latter. Uh, you know, don't go knifing him. Let me break his legs first. Get information. <laughs> uh, a, a tiny, withered, uh, wizened creature of an individual comes walking up uh, a pathway through the garden towards the gate. Um, he, his, his skin is dark and weather beaten and, and uh, sunned. He looks almost like a walnut. Uh, he's wearing a white turban and uh, a basic white linen uh, robe or shift. Um, as he approaches, he's, he's clearly breathing through his mouth and it doesn't look like he has any teeth left. Uh, and he, uh, he says in a, in a mix of English and Arabic, which Khan would understand, obviously the, the rest of you probably pick up parts of it. Uh, I, he asks, uh, or he says, uh, yes, you have arrived. And that's partially in Arabic? Yeah, it's a mix of English and Arabic. Uh. Walter looks at Khan and says, yeah. uh, <laughs> maybe you should, uh, maybe you should talk to this, uh, this gentleman and uh, introduce our introduce us and uh, offer and ask to uh, speak to the major. So is this like an Arabic form of asking who we are? Um, not exactly. No, it 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 it, it was oddly familiar. I'm not sure I follow. It, he said it almost like it, it was like more of a, expected? yeah, like you were expected. It was more of a statement than a question. Were you expecting us? I, John will say. He, uh, as he starts to unlatch and open the gate, he, um, he, uh, he mumbles in Arabic, uh, and what he says is, uh, uh, of course I was expecting you, and I can't believe you've kept me waiting this long. And then he switches to English, and he says, You are here to see the Major? Yes, we are. He says, uh, ver do. He says, very well. And he opens the gate and allows you all in. Is this him singing? I'm not sure. I don't think so. I don't yeah. know. Is this him? He, he says... Uh, <laughs> he knows us. I don't know. <laughs> is this he? No. Um. He says... Uh, he says, I I am John and El Roof. He says, uh, come inside and I will take you to the major. This is his hitman. Mr. La Roof. Or whatever. Yeah. El Roof. El Roof. El Roof. Do you maintain these gardens? Do you maintain these gardens? They're beautiful. He says, he says, yes, I am the major's gardener. Well done. He says, why, thank you. He you closes the gate proud. behind you guys. He goes, oh, pride is for other men. I am just a simple gardener. <laughs> Singh looks up at the house and he says, uh, he says, uh, well, this... 
This guy must be so rich he can eat fried chicken all week long. Con <laughs> um, uh, looks around for chickens. <laughs> I do not see any poultry about Slim. Well, I'm just saying he didn't come to town two on a mule. And he, uh... I, I do not see any mules. <laughs> <laughs> um, who wants to make a um, who wants to make a reason academia with a history or art focus? Role? Clearly not, Henry. My reason academia is eleven, and I do not have a focus in either of those. I have linguistics and occultism. But I think you're the best. Yeah, you're, you're definitely going to be the best on this. Okay. So, reason? Yep. And academia. No, no focus. Very good, very good. Wow. Um, so, glancing as, as he starts to, as he starts to, uh, to, uh, lead you down the path towards the house, and you kind of glance around. You, Khan, hey, you're you're an educated and well traveled man. Um, this Indeed. home, <laughs> this this home is a wonderful example of high Islamic architecture, it, and it it outdates the rest of the homes in this neighborhood probably by several hundred years. Uh, it, it, it almost doesn't even belong. It's, it's rather odd. Um, but it's beautiful and it's, uh, it's, it's, it's impressive that it stood up this amount of time. And then Con, I'm going to have you make one other role and I'm only going to have you make the role because it wouldn't do anybody else if they, any good if they succeeded. So, um, make an insight observation with hearing as a focus if you have it. Now we have some we have some momentum, right? You do, you have two momentum. So just saying it's there if you want another guy. You know, why not? I mean it's we're gonna probably not end up using it for this scene that much. Okay. Alright, so you can it's use one and get a third die? Yeah, why not? Alright, so insight. Three dice. Hmm. Bonus momentum too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, as he leads you through the garden and to the front door of the home, I uh, he mumbles something. I uh, and you hear it, and it's in it's it's in Atlantean. And he says simply, he mumbles simply, I hope they do not make me wait too long. Um, Khan will stop walking. And then it turns into Laurel and Hardy when the other two guys uh, run into you and you all fall down. Yes. I say, what's on second? <laughs> I say, you are a devotee of the hidden arts, sir. Uh... He uh, he turns towards you, and suddenly his his bright blue eyes kind of glaze over, and he seems to be staring through you. And he says, uh, he says in Arabic, "I'm sorry, I, I don't understand what you mean. I'm just an old man." Does this guy seem like a naughty boy, or is he like an alright dude? Like, what's the, vibe? <laughs> what's the vibe on this guy? Is he, like, creepy? Um, inside like observation with really instincts. Evil? Okay. You know, uh, metagame. I do have that. It sounds like that what he's going for is this guy is being puppeted by somebody else. Potentially. Hmm. I don't know. Oh, is that your roll right there? It's my roll. Two Holy bonus momentum. shit. Um... So, um, I, well, I'm not going to give you the bonus momentum. I'm just going to use all three successes on your roll to tell you the information you need to happy. know. Um, he's, uh, he's most definitely not what he seems. Uh, he is 
he's obviously a very learned individual, uh, which you obviously can surmise that from the fact he knows Atlantean. But uh, there, there doesn't seem to be any Ill, Ill intent here. There's an expectation or an anticipation. Uh, and, of course, the moment you started to suggest to him that he wasn't what he appeared to be, he again put this uh, facade back on. So whatever whatever he is, he's not willing to just outright admit it quite yet, but you don't get any ill intention from him whatsoever. Well, Khan will say, I beg your pardon, I must be mistaken. And then in Atlantean, he will say, please lead on. <laughs> um, the... Uh, he looks at you for a moment, his eyes seem to clear, and he squints slightly. And then he uh, he opens the door, uh, steps in, and holds it open with his hand motioning for the three of you to enter. I will enter. I will follow. The, you're, you're in a... You're in a uh, what would be known in this culture as a greeting chamber. It's kind of a, kind of a sort of living room. Um, there's, uh, there's, uh, several pieces of wicker furniture, cushioned wicker chairs, uh, as well as a table. Um, there is a man there in a tailored linen suit. He's in his, um, he's in his, you would guess he's in his fifties. He has a, he has a balding head with, uh, with, uh, white hair, shaved short around the sides um a bit overweight but you know ruddied face kind of red cheeked he is uh he seems to be puffing joyfully on a hookah um and uh the you can play at that game <laughs> that's right <laughs> the uh the gardener um the gardener says um uh uh, Major, I present to you, and then he turns towards the three of you and goes, I don't know their names. Uh, Khan will step forward and present himself. Inspector General Khan Amir Singh, at your service. Valentine Hughes, friends call me Slim. And I'm Henry Baker. Pleased to meet you. He, uh, he uh, places the hookah down. And he stands up and he says, "Well met, gentlemen. What a what a bizarre group of characters. Two Americans and a Sikh. Good chap, good chap. I'm sure. I I served with a brigade of you during the Great War. Good men, excellent fighters." Khan will nod in um, acceptance of the compliment. And he'll say, not much stranger than a butler who speaks Atlantean, sir. He, uh, his brow kind of furrows and he, uh, he says, I have no idea what that means. He goes, but welcome to my home. He, uh. What the hell's going on here, man? Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, that was so That's very interesting. interesting. He, 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 he looks at Elroth and he says, uh, he says, uh. Perhaps you could bring our guests some tea. And uh, uh, the 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 small old man he uh, he kind of looks at he looks at the major he looks at the three of you he sighs and then he goes uh, he goes shambling off through a doorway in the back of the room muttering <laughs> something. The size of a planet. <laughs> He me to make tea. You guys ever see the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy? That's right. That's yep. right. <laughs> Mark in the room. Um, he says, so what uh, What brings you men to my humble home in Cairo? And he sits back down and he picks up the, the hookah again. Now, humble home, I, I have to point out that, uh, you know, in addition to this house being a three-story uh, beautiful example of Islamic architecture and being several hundred years older than the other homes. Um, even this room in of itself has has uh, reliefs and, and statuettes uh, that just a quick glance all look um, like stereotypical Egyptian artifacts, which you might have seen in books or museums or whatnot.
Um, and he, uh, I think <laughs> Slim is, is looking at uh, Baker and Singh for this, for the the uh, the etiquette required here. But if it's an awkward pause, he'll talk. <laughs> well, Major, uh, we uh, we are working for the British government on a very sensitive matter. Uh, so you understand that uh, we rely on your discretion. But... Uh, your name has somehow been uh, loosely associated with this uh, with this matter. So we came to see if you could uh, provide us some insight. He uh, he leans forward and his voice drops kind of to a conspiratorial tone. He says, "Oh dear, oh dear me! What is this matter of which you speak?" Well, it seems that some entities of the German government are investigating some artifacts, very old artifacts, uh, and they have been Oh, following the trail of some investigators, uh, they've stated some names, different places in, in Europe. And uh, what was interesting was that some information that we luckily obtained listed you as, uh, listed your name on some uh, some information. I he, was w wondering if you, in your time, it seems that you've been stationed here in Cairo before you retired. You obviously like the country and the city and the area because you retired here. You're wondering if uh, you've ever heard of the lost city of Atlantis? He, uh, he, he, he blurts a laugh, uh, and he says, uh, <laughs> he says, surely, uh, surely, Mr. Baker, you jest. He says, uh, yes, I, uh, to your point, um, yes, I, I, I love the city of Cairo, uh, I love Egypt and everything about it. It's it's history. The culture is so rich, and so much of it has been has been lost. I personally have have spent my life acquiring as many artifacts as I can uh, for the purpose of preserving them. I'll take you on a tour of my home here soon and show you uh, and and show you uh, my collection. The my home itself is one of the uh it was the first acquisition he says but um and before he before he continues uh you guys kind of hear a rattling of of uh ceramic or china and and uh I, El Ruf comes back in from the back and he's carrying a tray shakily and the you know the the everything on it is rattling there's tea going back and forth you know dipping over <laughs> the edge of the cups and uh he he comes over to the wicker table and he sits it down he says i i have brought tea and strumpets no wait that is not the word biscuits biscuits <laughs> and uh <laughs> and uh, uh that's funny manders manders looks at him and says uh thank you uh thank you you may return to the garden now he goes thank allah and he turns and starts to walk out say friend can i come with you i think i'd like to catch a smoke uh, while the gentlemen are they're talking he uh he looks at you and says, um, I, I suppose, but 
do not put your cigarettes out in my garden? Well, of course. Of course. And he, uh, he's got like an unlit cigarette dangling from his mouth. And he like tips his head at the, uh, the others. He says, uh, excuse me. And he says, uh, hey, what was the servant's name? El Ruff. El Ruff. Well, Ellie, <laughs> well, why don't you around the garden here? Um, he, uh, he just, he just nods and, and turns and starts to shamble out the, out the front door. All right. He follows him out and, uh, we can do a conversation out there whenever, but, uh, or you can continue with this one. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll come back to you in a moment. Okay. Um, so, uh, so, major Manders says, um, but, you know the Germans. The Germans certainly spent their time uh, digging and researching in uh, 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 across Egypt uh, for my name to come up in you know in recent conversation with anything German is is shocking. Of course, uh, of course, we fought the Germans in the Great War. He says, what is the context in which my name has come up? No one's questioning your loyalties, Major, just so that's clear. He, uh, he just nods his head. Academic. Yes, sir. You're trying to understand why the Germans would be interested in you. Um, is it possible that they believe you've, in your time and the various work that you do as it did as an engineer that and your collection obviously that you've somehow acquired some items that would interest them he says well i'm uh it is possible I have quite the passion for antiquities and trinkets and knickknacks and beautiful things uh there are certainly always those who are attempting to acquire them themselves. Uh, and then he, you know, his eyes widen for just a moment. He says, you know, this is most interesting. He says, um, I did speak to uh, a, a professor or uh, I, I believe he was, um, uh, a German man. It was some year ago. Some uh, about a year ago. What was his name? Would uh, Ehrlichman ring a bell? Yes, yes, that is it. Uh, Doctor Ehrlichman. Uh, he he came by my home. Uh, it was right about a year ago. He uh, he he was asking questions about. Uh, he was asking questions of me about Egyptology, and and he, it's interesting because he mentioned Atlantis as well, which is of course a fairy tale we all know. I do. I do find it interesting. Sorry, what was that? Uh, would you say, Sharif? Out of character, of course. These guys seem so full of shit to me. I mean, he lives in, like, <laughs> sorcerer, you know, like, downtown sorcerer. <laughs> Ancient house of sorcery. He's got, like, a sorceress butler. And he's like, magic? What's that? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> he could be oblivious. He could, which is actually would actually be hilarious. He accidentally lives in like a, like a, a locus of magic and he has like a, a sorcerer's butler but he he's like Mr. Magoo he doesn't realize it, <laughs> it, it, it probably more like um, or like that or like uh, uh, like uh, Lewis Tully from Ghostbusters you know Rick Moranis' character <laughs> yes. yeah can you see him like there's some weird shug off thing like pulling itself across the floor and he like steps over it like while reading the newspaper he's like, <laughs> could you please let the cat out <laughs> um, he 
says, well, but be, that that is I I don't remember much I uh, of him. I uh, he asked for he he asked to see my collection, which yeah, I'm happy to show to anybody, and and we talked for some time, and then he left. That was all. Did uh, what uh, what did he what did he seem interested in in particular? Uh, he. He asked about uh, he asked about any any artifacts that I had uh, in regards to the 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 time period of the the Amarna period, uh, uh, King Amenophis and and that time period specifically, which I I have some of those artifacts, but he didn't seem interested in anything I had to offer. Um, we are very interested in seeing your collection. Um, His eyes light up. And uh, it sounds like uh, you spent some time compiling it. Uh, and I'd very much like to see uh, your eye for, for uh, interesting and treasured pieces. I was wondering if you've ever seen this and pulls down pants. <laughs> yeah. No. Walter takes the piece of paper that had the address on it, turns it over and uh, draws the uh, strange spiral A strange spiral, um, what do you call it? Um, symbol or yeah, or from whatever. the tablet, from the tablet, and um, shows it. He says, actually, actually, we took a rubbing of it. Oh, you did. I don't have it. Yeah, we took a rubbing of it, but I don't have it. I think, I think, uh, well, maybe Con has that. I'm trying to remember from the last session whether it was Con or Walter. I think it was Walter, but uh, how do we rewrite okay. a truth? Is it momentum or fortune? Um, you can do it either way. Um, Why don't we use momentum to say we brought it along? That's fine. You can okay. do that. Yeah, it would I, be easier to just show him the rubbing instead of you know, okay. Drawing. That's fine. Oh, this rubbing. I just happened to have it in my pants. What a um, he uh, he. Uh, he looks at it and he says, I have seen something like it. It looks like a doodle I drew as a schoolboy. <laughs> says, no, I, I, I have no idea of what significance it may have. It does certainly seems more like whimsy than anything. And then he, uh, he jumps to his feet, his, his shoes like clattering on the stone floor. He says, uh, you wish to see my collection? Very much so. I would love nothing more. Let me give you a tour. And uh, he uh, motions towards one of the doorways, leaving the room. All right. Henry snags a biscuit on the way out. He's all right. We're gonna we're going to well, let's do this. Um, one of you make a reason academia role with history or art as a focus. I still think that's probably con. Oh, definitely. Okie dokie. Anything that starts with reason is not <laughs> Henry. Um, oh, yeah, look at that. Um, hey, look at all these rolls. So, yeah, you'll pay for it later, I promise. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, as he... As he leads you through, it's a the the home is uh, like I said, it's three stories and it's all stone construction and there's there's um there's carvings and reliefs and just uh, carved straight into the home. Um, he has dozens dozens of of artifacts. Some as small as statuettes. Some of them are are clay, you know, uh, are clay uh, shards and uh, and he's got several 
uh, larger reliefs and all sorts of stuff. It's there is not a single piece in this collection that isn't authentic and, and ancient. Um, uh, he he has obviously worked very hard to secure these, and he tells you stories about them. Tells you each where he got. He remembers where he got each one of them from, and uh, and how uh, and you get to, you get the impression that people are that people are often coming to or even tells you people are often coming to his home with offerings and he he has he's been doing this so long he has such an eye he immediately knows which ones are real and which ones aren't and usually the ones that are real are the, are not the ones that are trying to sell him for a high price um uh, the uh, the the home is open in the middle it's open to the sky in the middle and there is a there is a um an ancient well in the center, which has a uh, an ornate carving and and uh, monument uh, uh, on top of it. Uh, now, the that in and of itself is no significance, um, you know, in terms of being an artifact in and of itself. But it's just something you notice. The um, uh, but anyway, he leads you through the house, floor after floor, room after room. His home is a museum of Egyptology in and of itself. So Slim, you uh, you leave the leave Khan and Baker and go outside. It's it's much warmer outside than it was inside, um, and uh, the 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 man is muttering to himself as he uh, moves over to a flower bed and and starts to work. Um, what do you do? So Slim. He, he lights a cigarette, and uh, while he's kind of like following this guy around, like, yeah. uh, like kind of a, I think, uh, sort of aloof. He's kind of like annoying him, right? And and Slim is just babbling, just talking, uh, just talking about all this sorts of stuff about how, like, this reminds him of home. He's pointing out plants in the garden, like all these succulents and things that that remind him of uh, of Texas, <clears throat> and uh, and he says. Uh, I appreciate you uh, letting me get a breath of fresh air, friend. I, I'm not much for these uh, rich eggheads. I'm more cut from your jib. You know, I, you know, I, I came from nothing. I was so poor. I had a tumbleweed as a pet. You understand? <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, he, hey, hey, you know, there are times when you say something that he just looks at you with these blank eyes like he has no earthly idea what the hell you're talking about um and, and once in a while he mumbles something to himself uh in a language that you don't understand you think it's probably arabic uh you probably catch an english word here or there um uh, as he works in the in the dirt and in fact he pulls a he pulls a a potted plant over that he has obviously set up to transplant into the ground um make an insight observation roll with sight as a focus if you like um and momentum wise you guys have two if you have any interest in that okay um I'm just going to go with the uh, standard roll, I think, here. All right. Okay. Um, wow. Wow. You guys are just knocking everything out of the park right now. Um, as he, uh, as he uh, reaches in and kind of lovingly pulls uh, this plant out of the pot, his, uh, his left sleeve pulls up to his forearm, and on the underside of his wrist, you see the spiral symbol from the stone in the museum. And he he places the plant down in the ground, starts to lovingly move the earth around it. Come on, no. Uh, All right, so so Slim's like, you know, he like quietly takes a drag from uh, uh, his cigarette, and uh, and he says, uh, "Well, well, listen, friend, this uh, this Manders feller, he treat you all right? He." He is a good man. He's saved my home from destruction. And as a result, he now lives here. This is your home. This has been in my family for... And he says something in in another language you don't understand. Well, it is a beautiful homestead. I will give you that. 
This is a pretty place. Mighty fine. He he just nods a few times and continues to his work. So this man just came in and he lives in your house. It was slated for demolition by the government. He uh, he paid an extraordinary sum to keep it from being destroyed. So your family from here? Uh, for I, I didn't catch that a long time. Yes. Yeah. This is an old place. Cairo, I mean. Mm. I ain't seen nothing like it. It says, I imagine not in Texas. <laughs> he, uh, he nods and, uh, and he says, say, uh, I noticed that mark on your wrist. What's that mean? He says, it took you long enough. And then he kind of looks to the sky and he says, Allah help me, they sent the idiot to talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> now, I take offense to that, sir. I was just being polite. He says, you're right, I apologize. I am most sorry, and he, he kind of bows towards you a little bit. <laughs> well, I can tell you're tough as this dude's gunk. <laughs> I, uh... What the hell is that? <laughs> Dude, that's awesome. <laughs> I, I understand. A man comes into your home, your ancestral home, takes it from you. I could see how you'd be bitter about that. So I'm going to overlook it. I, I'm uh, real quick aside from the GM here. Yeah. I don't know that I have ever spent as much time developing one of my RPG characters as I think Kyle has Slim. <laughs> I just, I, I think Kyle spends his nights up late lying in bed, surfing on his phone, looking for bizarre Texan things to say. <laughs> That's a great one. I got to write this one down. <laughs> Screenshot. I actually have a, uh, a tab open with like a web page of Texas things. Oh my it's God. Just, uh, whatever. I just picked that up. <laughs> It's freaking fantastic. Um, he says, when, when your friends are ready to leave, you must come back at midnight. Bring with you the blue lotus, and I will help you on the next leg of your journey. Blue lotus. Now, uh, I suppose I am the idiot from Texas. What are you talking about, friend? It's an Egyptian flower. Very rare. Oh, sure Blue lotus at midnight. Tonight midnight or any midnight? Tonight would be better. There are other forces at work. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. He kind of cocks his head and he, he says, uh, I like you, Willie. He says he 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 nods and he says, "You are a better man than most people would think." I appreciate that. You know, Baker was right. You do keep a nice garden, and uh, Slim nods and uh, begins to walk towards the house. <laughs> All right. Um. So I I I I think the tour of. Major Mander's house probably takes longer than Slim's conversation. So, you know, okay. Slim comes back into the house, and of course, the room is uh, the the room is empty. Uh, you know, unless you have something else you want to do, I, I see Slim meandering through the house, uh, uh, idly following. You know, the echoing sounds of Mander's uh, booming voice throughout the halls of his home. Before you uh, finally reach the uh, reach, Khan and uh, Baker, um, getting towards the end of the tour. All right. Uh, so Slim uh, like saunters up, um, and uh, I, I don't know. You guys are turning like a bunch of like Egyptian artifacts, and uh, I, I think Slim, uh, Singh would just like turn around, and Slim is staring at the 
the you know bare breasts of a <laughs> of a <laughs> Egyptian uh, you know princess or something like statue, and uh, he looks back and he's like, oh, oh, uh, that's a nice, nice gentleman that Ellie. He was a good hire. Did I miss anything? Um, uh, Major Mander says, well, El Roth is not technically my employee, I suppose. We're, uh, we'll, we'll call it a mutually beneficial uh, relationship. Uh, but uh, we are, we're almost at the end of, of, of my tour. I, I really appreciate you gentlemen coming to my home. I'm sorry I could not be more helpful with your other uh, with your other matters. It's quite all right, Major. We, uh, we're grateful for your hospitality. He says, um... It is an impressive collection. You should be exceedingly proud of, of your eye for antiquities. He says, why, why, thank you. I, I only wish to, I only wish to preserve what Egypt is and has been. He says, uh, he looks at Khan and he says, uh, Inspector General Singh, do you, uh, do you enjoy a cricket match? Bully. <laughs> Naturally, I do. <laughs> he says, uh, then... I, I've been known to uh, stomp the wicket in my youth. I don't know what that means. <laughs> 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 it seems like something you'd say if you were a Oxford type. He says, "Well, the the El Gazira Sports Club is is having a is having a match uh, tomorrow afternoon at at sixteen hundred hours. I I think you would most enjoy it. You should come. This, this is jelly good. I would love to be there. Thank you for the invitation, Major. I'll he says, bring my own." Uh, what is it, a cricket bat? I bring my own bat. Just as an aside, uh, isn't it typical for cricket matches sometimes to last for days? <laughs> well, <laughs> can't be helped. <laughs> um, trying to get us invited to the ball. Gotcha. He, uh, he's, he's taking a hard left. <laughs> he, he says uh he says well uh i will i will see you there then uh you'll be there as my guest uh el gazira is playing their crosstown rivals and i i assure you that uh they will prevail um khan just realizes with uh with a sense of sinking disappointment that uh, he will not be playing in tomorrow's match <laughs> it says very well gentlemen uh if you have no more need of me i uh think i will uh i will prepare for dinner uh thank you again so much for coming to my home you, you, uh el Ruff will see you out thank you again for your hospitality was uh, most kind of you to meet with us on such short notice. So uh, El Elrof leads you outside, and as he opens the gate, um, he uh, he looks at Slim again and says, uh, "Blue Lotus, midnight. Do not forget." I never could, friend. Appreciate our talk, and he uh, tips his hat. He winks at him and then turns back towards uh, Al Hazred's car. And uh, as the gate closes, uh, uh, he uh, looks at Baker and Singh and he says, uh, well, while you two were gallivanting around looking at all them nude statues, <laughs> I was like, you And uh, he says, uh, how about we get back to the hotel and I fill you in. That, uh, by the way, that, that, that sounded just like a, uh, a a Texan version of Will Smith's line from Men in Black. <laughs> While you were in there having all the fun, I was out here doing all the work. When uh, Tommy Lee Jones was inside the uh, 
He was inside the bug. <laughs> God, I love that movie. <laughs> um, right, yeah, El Hazard is still there, car running. Abdul, mm. enjoy your nap. He uh, he uh, leans forward and uh, pushes his hat back, and he says, uh, "Master Slim, you are not long. Where to now?" Well, we're headed back to our accommodations, Star and Azar. Uh, these two gentlemen would like to get back right quick, so uh, step on it. He says, <laughs> <laughs> he says, you, uh, you are speaking my language, my friend. You're going to kill us all. <laughs> Henry looks at Slim and says, you think that was really necessary? <laughs> he winks. Uh, and then grabs the oh shit bar or whatever. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. So he he uh, blasts the car through various side streets around a uh, around a square that clearly has a uh, a Commonwealth barracks in it, and then uh, makes it to uh, a road called uh, Shari Muhammad, uh, which he takes northwest. Uh, takes northwest uh, uh, up to an intersection uh, with the uh, Shari El Amir, uh, and then he continues up a, a road that starts north and then s- kind of swoops northwest, uh, taking you back to the Star of Nazar, uh, all the while uh, weaving in and out of traffic, uh, avoiding pedestrians by mere inches and camels by even less. Oh, man. And... Uh, <laughs> The uh, the the drive of the of the hotel is of course not paved. It's it's mostly dust and dirt, bringing the car to a stop in a great cloud. And he says, "Your destination, gentlemen." Much appreciated, Abdul. <laughs> Your services are uh, top notch. <laughs> and uh, you know, get customary. You know, gives him the customary amount of money and uh, <laughs> steps out. Yeah. He says, uh, he says, uh, uh, thank you again. And he looks back in the back seat and, uh, uh, and says, uh, and says, oh, good. Nobody urinated in my seat this time. (laughs) He says, you're stalwart passengers. As the, uh, as the doors close and the guys get out, uh, he says, now, why is it that I never get to drive? <laughs> All right. I've, it, I've, I've recently come to appreciate your skills in that department. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're going to, uh, I think Slim's going to head up to the room and check in on Walter. Yeah. Uh, Walter is having a, having a fitful uh, attempt at rest doesn't seem to be quite getting what he needs why is that Walter what's what's keeping you from getting the rest you need I wonder for you it isn't helpful that the dog keeps licking his ear <laughs> Beep. the Jim step away Jim you alive uh oh. Oh. Hmm. Hopefully he was hearing us, but we weren't hearing him, so he reloaded. You hear me now? Oh, oh yeah, there you are. Yeah. There I just had to... yeah, so I'm uh I'm being kept up by uh images of the uh, Nianter uh, Lopa uh, Pastor thing. Mm. Uh, can't seem to shake it out of my head with both excitement and dread. I like uh, it. Yeah, I just feel terrible. I can't uh, can't knock myself out. Slim's up there. I'll be asking for uh, any of his whiskey if he's got it. Sure. Man, sure. this will knock me out. Oh, by the way, do did all of you guys reset your fortune points at the beginning of this? No. Okay, yeah. Y- yes, I did. Are you talking the beginning of today or just in, uh, the beginning of this game yesterday oh, or yeah, not last yeah. week, I should say. Yeah. I mean, did we get two? Or three. three. Um, and I believe Walter used one, so he should be at oh, two. Oh, so I have two more? 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, sweet. Yeah, because you went back to three, and then you used one last session, so you're at two. Okay. Um, if if uh, if Walter's like fitfully sleeping, and he's sort of like in and out, right? I I like this idea. That you can it, you know say no or whatever, but like Slim comes into the room and he sees Walter like rolling around, and like from Walter's perspective, like Slim comes in, uh, and is like reaching out, and like you're sort of like in between sleep. And, and wakefulness, and you hear him say, tell me, friend, have you seen the yellow sign? <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then all you see is like, Walter, Walter, you all right? You all right? Jerk away. You know, um, Walter, don't you have, don't you have a, a mental trauma or a mental scar obsession with the king in yellow? I certainly do. So, a, yeah, with the actual book, I have a tattered copy of it that I'm paranoid of losing. I'm going to give you the option of invoking that scar and gaining a fortune point. Um, but there's going to be a drawback. If you decide you want to do that, I'm going to make you increase your fatigue by one as well. Uh, well, seeing as I got two left already, I think I'll I'll bank that. Okay. That offer and All right. Do it because uh, I need to get better for the next day. I think I don't want to take a chance. Not a problem. I felt like it uh, it fit in the narrative pretty well. It does. So. It does. So. But um, but no, that's fine. It just it's just keeping you awake at night, but it's not or not at night, but while you're trying to rest, but it's not causing you any more undue issues. Right. I guess is the best way to put it. Okay. Very good. Very good. Awesome. All right. Uh, Slim, maybe yeah. you can explain to us now uh, what Elrof meant about Blue Lotus at, at midnight. Fair enough. Fair enough. And he goes over to the bar cart and he's like, he's like making something for himself. And uh, he says, well, I talked to uh, Ellie. Uh, apparently... Uh, he's not a servant. Apparently, that man Manders, the major, he uh, saved Ellie's house from being, uh, what's the word? Uh, what is the word? Uh, you say oh, he saved leveled, it from demolition. Yeah. Demolition. Yeah. Leveled by the government. So they have some sort of mutual arrangement, I guess. Well, anyways, I was. Uh, talking to him out there he was potting a little cactus and uh and uh his, his sleeve lift up and uh he had one of those and he points to the rubbing that you know someone has he says one of those spirals on his wrist i asked him about it and he got a little squirrely had to put him back in his place <laughs> but uh he told me that uh before we leave preferably tonight midnight we would come back to that establishment with a blue lotus. Did he say a blue lotus or the blue lotus? <laughs> uh, Slim does a double, like he's, he like squints and like slowly cocks his head. Is there any way that he can remember that? Um, a, uh, he would, he said a blue lotus. He's uh, yeah. He said a blue lotus. I think it's a, uh, some kind of flower. Yeah. Um. Uh. I'm not sure. Uh. Anyone can make reason academia with either science or yeah. I'd even let you do a history. Anyone? Well, it's not. It's not Walter. <laughs> yeah, I guess not. You know, I got a pretty good reason. Reason academia, so that's a seven for me. Ooh. I'm, uh, yeah, so it's it. so con. 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 Um. Yeah. So the the blue lotus is an Egyptian flower. Um. It's uh, it's relatively rare. Uh. And very expensive to buy if you find one they're actually they're actually protected so they're not just kind of sold outright um the um and then i'm going to ask for another role that anybody can make we're going to call it this is going to be a little weird we're going to call it reason observation with a sight focus Ooh, interesting 
that one I actually have pretty good stats then. And you guys do I, have three momentum. I have a nine, but uh, you know I'll, I'll roll on it. But I don't know who uh, is this. I mean, a, what happens if I try to roll on it? What's um, they... your complication range is increased because of your fatigue. So I have a I have a sight as a focus, and uh, I got a ten and a two with a focus and sight. So and 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 you guys can you can someone can help as well. Whoever wants to make the main roll with two dice, and then someone else can add a die for help. Well, a reason observation. He's better than me. I have uh, eleven, and I, I have instincts, not sight. So he's better. But I don't. I gotta know. sleep the night anyway. So I was gonna say I don't know how his negative stacked up like that. My, my fatigue didn't go away, so I need to sleep anyway. So if I go up a little bit, right. Well, the major concern is uh, the major the major concern would be you've got a better chance of rolling a complication. Oh, that's true. But, but it's still. I mean, guys. what's your fatigue too? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So you only roll a complication on eighteen, nineteen, or twenty. So it's not exactly a huge opportunity. And usually it's a nineteen or twenty, or just a twenty. Just a twenty. Yeah. And you guys do have three momentum <laughs> if anyone wants to buy extra dice. Oh, we could always re-roll the one die, right? With momentum. Uh, oh, 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 hold on. Um, or is that different? Or for that matter, for that matter, you guys don't even have to make it. No, it, that's different. Um, for that matter, you guys don't even have to make the roll. You could just spend two momentum on obtain information if you wanted. Do it. Yeah. All right. That that just kind of solves the issue. Um. So we'll just say, uh, Walter. Um, you remember, um, there were blue lotus flowers in the retaining pond outside the Egyptian museum. Oh, okay. I relay that to the group. Interesting. So. Well, why don't I just go pluck one and problem solved. <laughs> Do you think he wanted one that you say you plucked, or does he want one with the root structure that he can put in his garden? You know what? I think you're onto something. I think it would be meaningful if he was uh, able to plant that sucker. He seemed mighty into plants. Do these uh, blue lotuses have an occult purpose? Um, make a... Uh... Make um, a reason academia with a cult uh, focus roll. Um, bonus momentum. Uh, absolutely. Uh, in uh, they can be a, a prime component in certain forms of divination. And how are they used? Like, how how do we uh, preserve it for that use? Uh, usually, they just need the petals of the flower, and it they're usually dropped into water. Oh. Okay. So, so maybe... It takes a he'd... pail full of water, that'll be sufficient? Or a jar or something? Well, they're... They, um, well, it... The, the, usually they're dropped into water as part of the part of whatever divination spell. So um, are they preserved otherwise? Are they dried? Are they living when that's done? That's done. Or yeah, how, freshly how picked. Okay, so he needs it to be alive. Yeah. I will relay that to Slim or Henry, who's ever Henry's got super stealth. Maybe he would be the best <laughs> candidate for stealing one of these things since <laughs> since they're endangered or whatever. You really think that we can't go up there and just dig one out? Well, were we not told? In front of the museum. <laughs> <laughs> and aren't they? Didn't weren't they protected? Isn't that what somebody? Yeah, said? yeah, yeah. They're they're yeah. protected flower. I think Slim's just a doofus. <laughs> uh, we, uh, yeah. Let's send the ninja in and steal some flowers. Well, why don't uh, we dress up like gardeners? <laughs> ourselves a flower house. This might be a bad time for this, but can we do a five-minute bio real quick? Well, looking at the time, um, it's uh, uh, being quarter to 12 our time, and uh, Thermo, you had a hard stop at noon, didn't you? 
Correct. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Noon your time. Yeah, that's 11 our time. Yeah. So, like I said. Uh, you can play through another 14. I can wait. Yeah, just a few minutes. You All guys right. figure out how you want to pull this off. <laughs> yeah. Uh, first of all, we need to find something to put it in. But, yes, uh, I think it's up for, I think it's appropriate for Henry. On the way back to the house, we have to get there at midnight. We should stop in front of the museum. And I'll use my stealth to uh, stay hidden as I purloin the required flower, which is in the water lily family, actually. Um, very good. So what we will have you roll, we'll have oh, you. and yeah. Walter's got to sleep, right? So he's not with us. It's just going to be the three of us. Oh, is Walter staying That's behind? Correct. I don't know. Walter, Walter has to get eight hours of sleep. He can come. Because his first eight will be over before midnight, and it didn't do him any good. Right. So he needs another eight. But he can try and get that after the fact. He's just going to have to sleep in tomorrow if we're going to do this at midnight. Where is Walter? Walter? I'm right here. Uh, you you going to come with? Sure. Okay. Okay. What about the dog? So don't we're going to the museum dog. just to uh, pick the, the flowers, right? Well, yeah, but you guys are to stay out of sight and away from the... Mm -hmm. And uh, Henry's going to... Um, Henry's going to uh, use his urban stealth to uh, go ahead and just snag one. But we need something to put it in. I'm assuming we can pick up a jar or clay plot or pop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think that would be any okay. problem. I'm sure one of the right. many markets would have something right. like so that, that. So that's the plan. Um, as we approach the museum, it's dark. It's late. Um, but it's not too late because it's – if I remember right, if we're going to go on foot from the museum – to back to that guy's house, the major's house, that's a long trek. It's a, it's a few miles, yeah. It's yeah, good. so at 15, minutes, at 15 minutes a mile, at 15 minutes a mile, a couple miles is at least a half an hour to 45 minutes. So um, maybe an hour because it's not really a direct path. You have to cut Correct. up and down and across streets. So, Oh, so it's two miles as the crow flies, but not as you walk. Right. Oh, okay. So anyway, so let's just say we're there at 11 o'clock. As Henry cases the joint, uh, does he see anyone around at this late hour? Um, make uh, an inside observation with sight. Okay. All right. Um You, you don't – you're at the front of the museum, so you don't see anyone in particular um, I, in the area. But uh, there there are some lights shining from around the back of the museum, like vehicle headlights. Okay. All right. So I'm just going to uh... – do my best slinking to the um, to the pond in front of the museum to snag one of these flowers. Would that be would that be agility stealth or that, coordination stealth? Um, agility stealth with urban stealth as a focus. Okie doke. Um, 
Um, did we have any momentum? Two. Uh, how many momentum to get an extra die? Uh, one for the first. All right, then I'll take an extra die just for the heck of it. Okay. I just pushed the wrong button. Hold on a second. Let's try this again. Oh, wow. Look at that. Well, I guess I got the momentum back. Plus. <laughs> um, well, actually not. And I'll tell you why in just a moment. But you were still successful. <laughs> Uh, okay. you, you, you slink over to the retaining pond, um, and, uh, you see the, you see the, the flowers in it. You, uh, uh, you reach in and secure one. You take a look around and you're just about to, to, you know, to stand up, to slink back to the group. I, I, I imagine the group is probably like a quarter mile away in an alley type thing. Yeah. And yeah, I'm sure they're just peeking around the building watching. Yep. Yeah. And uh, as you're getting up to 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 head back to them, uh, you you freeze at the rumble of an engine, uh, and these uh, headlights go flashing across the darkness. You duck back down as a truck comes, uh, you know, rolling up the road from the back of the museum, a, a covered truck. And it, it passes by you and heads up one of the roads in the night. Uh, can I tell what make the um, truck is? Make an insight uh, observation with sight. Uh, let's see here. Where, ah, where'd my screen go? Sorry. Um, yeah, so one success, um, uh, it's a Bedford. Hmm. Okay. Which wouldn't be uncommon in... No. Yeah. Okay. If it had been a Mercedes, I would have thought twice. <laughs> <laughs> okay um so after they're out of the pit that thing's out of the picture what direction did it go uh it went let's see where's the where's the museum it uh it went north up uh towards the uh towards the main highway that goes uh southeast and northwest the okay. uh what is well, that thing called um, the Avenue it. de la Reine Nasli. Rene, so, Ren, 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 I don't know. Anyway. Anyway, once they're, once they're out of sight, I will, uh, complete my slink to my guys and say, that was a little close, but, uh, I've got it. Let's yeah. move. All right. All right. So let's let's get on it. So we're going to uh, we're going to move uh, as uh, well. It's the middle of the night. I mean, it's eleven. Right. Eleven o'clock at night. So we're just going to make our way there. All right. Um. You know, if I were if I were a pain in the ass, I would, you know, say that you're, you know, accosted by thugs or something. But I'm a, I'm a good and beneficent GM. <laughs> so uh, I'm just going to simply decide that you make it uh, to Major Mander's house uh, unmolested. Uh, as you come up to the lattice gate, um, you know, the, the old man, El Roof, is, is standing there waiting on you. And as... As you approach it, he says to you, um, "Good, you are just in time." And the, like, kind of the the ancient 
wizened, withered sound in his in that was his voice when you were here earlier tonight is gone. Uh, and he opens the gate. And I think that's probably a good stopping spot. Okay, cool. Cool. Well, I'm sorry we had to do a short one, guys, but... It's okay. It was fun. That's okay. It's, it's all right. Just keep pushing the rock down the field. <laughs> that's right. Um, but, uh... Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, guys, uh... Uh... Wish me luck this weekend. I got three days of selling at a horror convention here in Richmond. I'm going to meet John Carpenter Saturday. I'm excited Ooh, about that. Cool. Wow, cool. neat. So, um, good luck. Yeah, it uh, needs to needs to be a big one. Um, I'm I'm hoping it's gonna we're gonna sell a lot of books. So, very cool. Look forward to hearing about it. Cool. All right. Um, so again, off uh, next week. We'll see you guys on the 24th. Sounds good. Yeah. All right, cool. Cool. Uh, Later.